Trinity Exposed number 25, Pagan Philosophers Created the Trinity. Acts chapter 17, verse 16 through 18 says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Look up the Catholic Trinity. It is an idol. Uh, they have it on their big temples and everything else. It is definitely an idol. Verse 17, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Now look at this, verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, plural gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So let me get this straight here. The pagan philosophers are listening to Jesus, or excuse me, to Paul talking about Jesus and how he raised from the dead and everything, and they're saying that has to be more than one God. It couldn't be, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you know, all in one being. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, that must be three different gods. Isn't that interesting? Pagan philosophers are the ones that came up with the concept of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you here in just a minute some more proof on this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, one man, one being, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One being. All of the fullness, everything about God is in one man, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus the body, God the soul, Holy Ghost the spirit. But see, if you're a pagan philosopher, you look and you say, well, that doesn't make any sense, because how about this, and how about that, and how could the Son talk to the Father, and how could the da-da-da-da-da? And so you say, well, there has to be three gods. And so you come up with a system where you say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three persons. Yet there's just one God. It doesn't even make any sense. I mean, for that thing to work, they have to be one third of God. They can't all wholly be God themselves because they're three separate persons. They don't come together at all, ever. That's what the Trinity teaches. The Trinity is not saying that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, that they can come together. No, they're three separate persons. But they're somehow one God. They're not three gods. They're three separate persons, but they're not three separate gods. You see? It's a lie. It's absolutely ridiculous. But go back to Acts chapter 17, verse 22. What does Paul say to them? Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. If you have a new version, a lot of times they'll say very religious. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, verse 23, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom, ye there, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, Him declare I unto you. He didn't say, Them declare I unto you. He says, Him. It's singular. One being named God. Acts chapter 17, verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Sorry if you have a church building there. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord. Singular. If haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And yet exact, that's exactly what all these Trinity people do. They all make depictions of the Trinity, what they call the Trinity, trying to say it's the Godhead. Isn't that interesting? 
I, as a Bible-believing Christian, I can't make an image of the Godhead. I don't know what Jesus looked like. There's no description of perfect, you know, pictures and paintings that were made of Jesus from the first century there. There's nothing like that. The pictures and paintings that you see out there are done by Catholics. But the Trinity people, oh, they make, they make all kinds of paintings and statues and all kinds of stuff all the time. Verse 30, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he, again, notice the singular references here, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And you can watch another one where it says Jesus will raise himself up. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul, Paul departed from among them. So the pagan philosophers are saying, he's setting forth, forth strange gods. There's three of them. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That must be three different gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, you see. That's what the pagan philosophers were thinking. And Paul's saying, no, no, no. It's he, him, his. One Lord. The Lord. That's it. Just one. And the pagan philosophers are going, I don't get it. Yeah, because they don't understand the difference between a soul, a spirit, and a body. And that those three parts make up one being. They don't understand that. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God in them. But I've showed this in another study, and I'll show it here one more time. We have the Catechism, Official Catechism of the Catholic Church, page 74, number 251. It says here, 251 and 252, I'll read all of 251 and part of 252. In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the Church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Exactly what the Bible says in Acts chapter 17 and over in Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Isn't it interesting? Substance, person, or hypostasis, relation, and so on. In doing this, she did not submit the faith to human wisdom, but gave a new and unprecedented meaning to these terms, which from then on would be used to signify an ineffable mystery, infinitely beyond all that we can humanly understand. A lot of double talk there, but, you know. Uh, number 252, the church uses... The term substance rendered also at times by essence or nature to de designate the divine being in its unity. It goes on to say a bunch of other things. Let me show you this. If you haven't seen this before. All right, there you have it. Hopefully you can read that. And then up here we have this. Catechism of the Catholic Church. If you believe the Trinity, you believe in a polytheistic, pagan, false god, or gods. You believe in an idol of the Roman Catholic Church. You have been deceived. The Trinity is not in the Bible. The Word is not in the Bible because the what the Trinity represents is not in the Bible. All right, it isn't just that, well, the Word's not there, but... It's represented by the Godhead. Oh, no, it isn't. When you study what the Godhead is and, and who the Godhead is, I'll say that, Jesus Christ in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. One man. One being. Not three separate beings, but they're somehow one God. It doesn't even make any sense. You need to reject this Trinity teaching. It is a false, satanic teaching. 